Welcome to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast where you will discover creative ways to improve your health and well-being. Someone may have told you that art isn't for you, but they were wrong. Anyone can create arts for the health of it. No talent or experience necessary. I'm just a little songbird. Try to fly my way homeward with the melody and I make the beat. Don't know where it'll take me, take me. Cause when I'm in the dark of night, I sing my way back to the light. Come along with me and your heart will see that a song changes everything. To the Arts for the Health of It podcast. I'm your host, Richard Wilmore. I'm your co-host, Constanza Rader. And we had the most wonderful privilege of um, talking with Ginny Owens. She's an award-winning singer and songwriter and has done amazing things. And if you don't know who she is, you should definitely um, go and look her up. She's um, been blind from a young age and has used her music and her songwriting therapeutically throughout her life and with different um groups of people and it's it's she shares some of her um her insights and some even prompts at the end of the episode about how you can dabble like tiptoe into the waters of songwriting to use it um as an expressive outlet in your own life so it's really cool. A slew of writing prompts, and if you yes. can't, if you can't <laughs> pick at least one of those, and they're so easy, like yeah, using music that you already love, or you know, it's some really great stuff. I'm excited to. I know to try it out, right? Yeah. I mean, I've done some songwriting myself, but it's fun. It's sometimes fun to just play, and I think some of the prompts that she shares are very accessible, and you could do just while you were you know, listening to the radio or, yes. um, yeah, that's really and cool. She has a new book that uh, came out at the beginning of May that she talks all about. It's, it's, it's a really fun, I think we're going to say this, we're a couple months into this podcast now. And I think every week we're going to be like, we just talked to the best person the best ever. Person like, I know. It's, so, it's so cool. Like, we're so appreciative of everybody who's been on the show so far and people yeah. we haven't talked to yet. Like, Oh, the I list, our li- our wish list keeps growing, and I, it's we're getting to talk to such amazing people, and I, I can't, we can't get, I can't get through them fast enough. I just want to talk to everyone right uh, now. Well, that brings up like this is beyond talking about Ginny, but like if you're listening, and you're like, I want to go on that, and I want to talk to them, and I have something to say or questions. Reach out to, to us, yes. Yeah. Um, reach out to us to be on the show to talk to the people we're talking to. If you have questions, like everything's virtual so we're all very interactive yeah um, make sure you follow our facebook page we sometimes post on there if we have yes, opportunities and for subscribe live. to wherever you're watching or listening to this and um stay stay in touch with us that's the word i was looking for there you go. uh all right so uh jenny owens is a new york-based multi-award winning singer songwriter who's been releasing thoughtfully crafted songs for over 20 years although she looks like she's 15 <laughs> since her rocket town records debut without conditions oh without conditions sorry owens has recorded more than 10 albums garnering critical success chart topping radio singles and numerous film and television placements uh, when Stanzi jumped on this program this morning, she's like, do you know who Ginny Owens is? And I was like, all right, calm down. She was fan <laughs> I was. Uh, she was born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi um, and had a de- degenerative eye condition that left her completely b- blind by the tender age of three. As her vision diminished, her love of music and the piano expanded and Ginny discovered songwriting as a window into her unseen world. The unique perspectives inspired by her vision impairment have resulted in inspirational lyrics paired, paired with her diverse musicianship to afford her a space on an even more diverse set of stages. Uh, she's performed at the Sundance Film Festival, Lilith Fair, the White House, and her book, Singing in the Dark, will be released on May 1st. And this is our interview with Ginny Owens. Enjoy. So, yeah. At the end of this whole thing, everyone's going to be like, I love Ginny. 
How do I learn more about her? Where do I listen to her music? But you also can read about her now in her new book, Singing in the Dark. Can, yes. I think we should start there, which I think is probably going to give us kind of a, a reason why you're here. And then we can sort of work our way back. Sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So uh, Singing in the Dark is a book that I wrote during the pandemic. Uh, because why not write a book during the pandemic, right? And uh, so it is, um, it's a lot about my journey uh, as a person who uh, has loved music since probably before I was born. Like my mom says, I used to just leap in utero every time there was music playing. Um, so, and, and fell in love with piano playing and singing when I was, you know, a year and a half or two years old. Uh, but I also lost my eyesight when I was three. And so um, there has always been a sense of, you know, learning to sing in, in literal darkness. Uh, and I believe people can learn to sing in whatever sort of figurative darkness they might be uh, experiencing right now as well, um, because there's so much of that, you know, whether just darkness is like the heaviness of, you know, uh, a chronic illness or a disability, you know, the challenges that you face with that, or, or maybe it's just like not having clarity in your life. So I feel like there are all kinds of darkness and, um, that there is hope uh, around that darkness. For me, I'm I'm a, a Christian, and so a lot of the book also is about just ancient scripture and and the songs in that ancient scripture, and and where we I think find uh, kind of light that can speak into our darkness there as well. So it's kind of a combination of personal story and exploring some of those songs. And who mm. would you say the book is for? Who is it for? Yeah. Oh, I think it is for anyone who is curious about, uh, you know, finding hope and maybe wants to hear someone else's story about how they have, you know, been able to um, learn how to even take the difficult moments and and find opportunities to, to sing, as it were, uh, in those moments and uh, to find hope in those moments. Uh, certainly it would be, you know, if, if people have a curiosity about, you know, maybe what what scripture would have to say uh, to us, that definitely is a, a large part of the book as well. So, uh, but I think it's for anyone who who knows what it is to just, you know, face something you can't manage on your own. I, I think mm -hmm. that's kind of who it's for. You you talk a lot about, or you, you, you talk that about your songwriting, that's an important piece of, you're not, you know, you're not just a singer, you're not, you don't just play piano, but you're a songwriter. And, how therapeutic that's been in your own life. And I wonder if you could yeah. talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, one of my favorite quotes is, is Schumann that said, uh, it's music's mission to shed light on the depths of the human heart. And I have mm. found that always to be true. Um, I started uh, playing piano. We had an old upright broken down like piano with some keys missing that was very out of tune that came to live in our house uh, around the time I was two years old. And I immediately figured out I could play songs by ear. Um, so anything that I was hearing out in the world, I would come home and try to you know, pick out on the piano. And I also fell in love with singing uh, very early on. So uh, music kind of became my safe place. Um, and especially when after losing my sight, I uh, would would find, you know, especially getting into school age years, um, I would find life could be really lonely. Uh, bullying was a real thing. And so I would come to the piano and I would just sit down and um, began to really write my heart, you know, write whatever uh, I was processing in life. Um, I would kind of write it into a song. And um, so I started songwriting when I was maybe seven or eight. And wow. I remember the first few wow. songs that I played for family, you know, they didn't get it. <laughs> you know, you sort of have this image of your song sounds just like the person on the radio, right? And and they did not get that at all. And so um, I remember just having a, a pretty long season. I mean, I would come out and play, you know, a song occasionally, maybe once a year, maybe once every two years, whatever. Um, but for the most part, I would songwrite uh, alone when no one was at home. It really was my way of journaling, my way of sort of getting out whatever was going on. And um, I think just through years of doing that, I became, you know, maybe a halfway decent songwriter and um, also just kind of was able to, you know, 
I don't know, provide a little bit of therapy, you know, for my for myself through that experience, through that process. I mean, you uh, have won some a few awards and you've released a few albums. So I feel like you you might be OK as a songwriter, <laughs> a songwriting and a musician. You may have figured yeah. it out. If you're questioning that, I think <laughs> we have that answer here for you today. Well, thank I like, you. <laughs> I like that you said that songwriting can be life giving. And I was yeah. like, oh, that like my little heart was like, oh, that's so true. Yeah, absolutely. It's do you write songs, too? No, but oh, okay. I love I love music and well, I love you, lyrics. Yes, love, and you might want to write songs after we're finished talking. I, I mean, love. we're going to do writing prompts later. So yes. maybe that'll be my introduction to it. Absolutely. My my mission today is to get you to write songs. So. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say, you know, the thing about it is we are so, um, we're sort of wired, I think. I have no research to prove this, but I, I would say just based on my experience, we're, we're really wired to remember what we sing and mm -hmm. retain what's sort of coming out like in music form. I mean, you know, think about how many lyrics you know, and then think mm -hmm. about how many chapters of books you've memorized. <laughs> it's really That's not true. this, there's no compared, you know, no comparison really. So I think music can move us in ways that words just don't on their own. Um, Another one of my quotes that I really love is Augustine said, to sing is to pray twice. You know, I just mm. think there's something really reverent and beautiful and deep about um, the music's connection with the soul. Um, so I have really found, I think a lot of the process is, is subconscious, but I found that as I sit and write, um, even I remember as a kid is I would just sit and sort of write my frustrations, but write you know, what good could come out of a situation, I would actually, you know, find myself uh, more hopeful at the end of a session, you know, mm -hmm. of just sitting and doing that. Um, and I remember too, just um, even kind of learning early on that uh, somehow, um, you know, even if you're, well, for me, songwriting has always been like the conversations I'm, I'm not brave enough to have. So somehow those things kind of work themselves to the surface. And I remember even as a kid, I'd write about my friends and things that I wish I could tell them or ways that I'd like to encourage them or <laughs> things they were doing wrong. I mean, you know, then there's <laughs> middle school and high school where you write only about boys oh. and it was great. So, but there's always, there have always been just things in my heart I wish I could tell people. And a lot of times after I write the song, I actually can mm. uh, do that. And and I've worked out how I would say it to them. So, yeah, I feel like that is, um, you know, that, that's a very key part of songwriting. Um, it, it sort of gives something back to you. There's so many songs that I've written uh, that have really challenged me later, like mm. have encouraged my own thinking later. So, um, so I, I think songwriting is just one of those things that, uh, we can all learn to do on some level. I mean, some of us are like musically inclined and we'd actually learn, want to learn to write songs, but then some of us are just, you know, we love music. And even for those of us that just love music and don't feel like we're, you know, completely like we know what we're doing and we don't ever want to do it for a living. But I think those of us that just love music and, and love being creative can still, um, find ways to express ourselves in song. We're building anticipation for your your prompts at the end here. I'm very excited <laughs> to do that. The so you you hit on um you said something a second ago that after writing a song you felt like you were kind of returning to hope or you felt more hopeful yeah. afterward. And on your website you talk about um like right on the front page, you don't always, it says you don't always get to choose your circumstances, but you do get to choose the story your life tells. And here's what yeah. I've learned. And then you have four things. You have a purpose. Pain is not your enemy. Gratitude unlocks contentment and joy is possible. Yeah. I the, There's like oh, so much to unpack there, but I'd love to hear about maybe the role that the, that music or the arts have played in your resiliency. In, in the face of circumst certain circumstances and maybe dig in a little bit about what you've learned in, in your, your journey. Well, probably the best way to talk about some of that is with some stories from my, from my life. Yeah. Uh, I remember that, um, when I was in high school, I was super shy, like dreadfully shy, uh, especially just, you know, with people I didn't know. And, 
I remember uh, at some point uh, my mom sent me to youth group at a very large church uh, where there was probably, I don't know, six, 700 kids in the, in the oh, youth group. Oh my gosh. Really That's big. That's entire yeah. town I grew up. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's really big. It was, it was a lot. I don't know. Maybe it was 500, but it was a lot of kids. And, um, I, I remember just feeling so, uh, isolated and not really being sure. Like people were polite, uh, mm. as people often are when you're blind, you know, they know like there's some instinct that they should be polite and kind. That's not the same <laughs> as making friends, you know, True. it doesn't, it doesn't connect you with people. And, and there's, especially when you're a teenager, there's quite a bit of loneliness to that. You don't really get the memo that people are all kind of trying to find their way in the world. So you think it's just you that's off. And um, so I remember that just being a very difficult season, very awkward, people trying to be kind and me trying to receive their kindness, but never going past that. And I remember that um, I auditioned for um, a group that was going to sing. And um, my, uh, our youth leader was like, Oh, because I had played a song I had written and she's like, you got more of those somewhere you can play me. So I played her several of them, which mostly people hadn't heard. And so then she started asking me to sing those um, during our sort of weekly meetings, um, you know, pretty regularly. And it was through those songs that people learned I was like them. You know, they mm. learned that I actually had a teenager life too, that, you know, I was concerned about the same things they were, that I was reflecting on the same issues and challenges that they were facing. And so um, that was a really tremendous um, opportunity to learn that, um, you know, music can connect us all, but it can also reveal things that I could have never revealed just in conversation with, with folks. Mm -hmm. um, because you just don't, you don't get to get into all that, you know, but when you can kind of share the the depths of your soul in a song, then people really resonate and they hear, I think even just in the color of um, the melody and the tone of your voice, they hear their own heart and soul mm. and struggle, you know? So I think it's a very personal way to get to know people. Um, so that's one story. And then I'm trying to remember what the question was because I probably strayed very <laughs> there far There was a away. lot. No, no, no. That was a great example. I, you know, cut, talk, I was asking about the role that music has played in resiliency in facing yes. circumstances in your own life and then what you've learned through facing difficulties about gratitude yeah. and about joy and about um pain. I love I especially am interested in you know pain is not your enemy um because yeah. that's such a that's in such stark contrast to our our numb it culture yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know just numb yeah. it out just pretend it doesn't exist and you know scroll tiktok or... walk it off walk yes. it off <laughs> walk watch it netflix off. yeah yes walk it off is pretty good i should start <laughs> trying that <laughs> i live in new york so that's pretty easy to do you got lots yeah. of places yeah. to walk no one should be in pain in new york yeah <laughs> right yes <laughs> exactly you could eat it in new york as well you could eat it off in new york so you could just oh, eat all the food you all ever the wanted food. to yeah. yeah and it's just but it is true. I, I do think, I mean, I am a firm believer. Uh, part of the reason I wrote the book, I mean, the whole place of the book is there is hope to be found in suffering. If you never go through suffering, you don't know what it is to celebrate like great moments. I don't think like, I just mm -hmm. think there's like a, an awareness of just um, how great things can be um, that comes when you've really experienced difficult things, you know? Um, and so I, I think, for me, there's always something to be learned in the pain. I know that is very much uh, a part of my story. And so over the years, I have learned to go and process the pain through music. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those songs people will never hear, you know, like I don't, um, <laughs> I don't want them to ever hear. That's not the goal. But I think to just be <laughs> as honest as as you can in a song and, and again, just that idea of just like the color that the texture of a melody um, can also frame the things you're feeling, the emotion, the sadness. Um, so I have always found that uh, writing is, is a place where I can really kind of work out whatever uh, difficulty, whatever pain I've been going through. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's been tremendous um, to just you know, to, to kind of work out all of my 
all of my pain in in music. Uh, I mean, I don't know. There are plenty of times when I I haven't been able to do that, but for the most part, I um I work it out that way because I also then know um I can share that hope with other people best through song. Like I can mm. tell you, you know, I can say on my website, like, you know, that um that suffering is not the enemy, the pain is not the enemy, but I can sing about that and you're you're gonna believe that probably way more, you know, um, than if I just say it. So um, so yeah, I think songwriting has helped me learn how to frame those things and even talk about them and and work them out of my system uh, in a in a certain in a certain way, um, you know. And and for me, being a person of faith, I definitely have a just a deep sense that all pain has purpose, you know. So that that frames my writing as well. Just just knowing, just never feeling like oh, you know, God made a mistake. I I don't. I don't really feel that too often. So I know that even if there are overwhelming, terrible things that somehow there will be, there will work out for good, that there will be some kind of purpose in that. So, you know, so that kind of means that, that songs are always written with that core of hope, but that isn't to say there aren't many laments and many songs of anguish that, mm. that I write. It sounds yeah. like there's a whole bank of Ginny Owens deep cuts of all this, <laughs> all this raw where I kind of want to hear that. It, yeah. it reminds me of, um, uh, so I'm a Christian too. And, and in the Psalms, you know, that's, that's yes. the book in, in the Bible, what that's a collection of songs and it's, yeah. and there's lament songs and there's, you yeah. know, rejoicing Psalms and everything in between. It's this book of poetry. And, um, a lot of, a lot of them follow a similar pattern of, you know, things are bad and, you know, yes. I'm complaining, but then there's hope at the end. Yeah. But there's, that's good. But there's a couple of Psalms that don't do that where right. they end, like I'm thinking of Psalms 39, where the, yeah. the last verse is leave me alone so I can smile again before I'm gone and die. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he was having a pretty dark day that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love. Perhaps he should have had an editor. Yeah. <laughs> No, well, because then we can just keep following that practice and just write what we need to write. You yeah. Know? yeah. And I love that example that there are some days where I don't, you know, I don't see the, I don't see the bright side right now. Right. I don't right. see, I don't see the, the light, you know, singing in the dark. And I love, I love that title because it's like, um, that we can still sing even when we don't see the the light or see where the hope is and that that's that's okay right. um so i love that you share that you have this whole bank of of music that we maybe <laughs> haven't listened to that's kind of like the raw <laughs> yes it's all the raw out. stuff yes the unedited versions uh, yeah. but but to your point i was actually just thinking before you said that 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 that's one thing that's so interesting about uh, songs like um like the psalms for instance uh, they were all written, even the ones that turn out, hopefully, they were written from true deep places of suffering, like war and like pestilence, which, you know, I guess would be like a coronavirus, you know, like <laughs> they were all written from, I mean, so these people know of what they speak, you know, it's mm -hmm. definitely just dark days of endless frustration and and whatever. So I, I feel like it kind of gives me uh, comfort as I am struggling through something to just know, well, I can say whatever I can sing, whatever, just, just get it out of your system and, mm. you know, put it into a song. I don't know if a story about Jerry Seinfeld goes after a story about the Bible, but <laughs> totally it does. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld has a new, um, a new Netflix comedy special and I was watching it and he talks about how the words suck and great are basically the same thing. And that there's such a thin line between the two of them and the closing, like the last line of the joke is like, all right, so you're walking down the street and you have an ice cream cone and the top uh, scoop falls on the ground and you look and it sucks. And what do you say? Oh, great. Like, yes. <laughs> wow. like, and how close those oh words are. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. And that's what your story reminded me of. Oh, that I love Jerry Seinfeld. And I love that only he that so sounds like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I probably could have tried to do like an impression of him, but I don't think that would be great. No, uh, I, I, I love that. You know, it's it's kind of two sides of the adventure, but yet they are really close. So yeah, I want to talk to you about um, singing and performing at the White House. Yeah. No big uh, deal. Speaking of name dropping. Yeah, no, it was it was a while ago. Uh, it was 
Um, let's see. So it would have been the end of George W's term. And it was uh, the most awkward thing ever because I had to sing the national anthem. And then um, I think I sang a few more songs, but it was like on a Sunday afternoon. And I, I always sing with a piano in front of me. Like I don't just, uh, I feel awkward. Actually these days I, I do a little more like standing and singing alone if I'm if I must, but I hate it with passion. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going to stand up in front of a bunch of people and sing the national anthem by myself with nothing. So I just learned it on guitar, which I never play guitar that much. And so to learn the Star Spangled Banner on guitar uh, in like a week was <laughs> some complicated special. There. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> special. So I just played quietly and sang loudly. And <laughs> it was a super fun time, though. It was um, it was a uh, afternoon of like special events for kids um, that had special needs. And it was really a, a cool, cool time. Was there ever a moment where you stopped writing or playing that you were like, you know, life is life is life sucks or I just don't want to do this anymore or oh, yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Less now. I, I do feel like music is one of those things that grows in you and on you. Uh, and you just can't get away from it. But there have been plenty. In fact, I remember when I first started uh, traveling, I'd signed a publishing deal and a record deal, and I was on the road all the time. And it was just like, you know, I mean, thinking about things like radio singles, things that we don't, it's, it's not quite the same now. And now we have to think about streaming and stuff. But um, it was not fun. I mean, it was just more stress than fun. And I remember telling a friend, um, yeah, I mean, this is all right, but after a year, I don't want to do it anymore. I think I'm going to be a travel agent. <laughs> and so, um, I see that yeah. worked out for you. Yeah, I see it did too, right? It, <laughs> there were super are. supportive friends you have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Super, like 20 years later. But uh, yeah, there have been plenty of times, and I definitely have struggled over the years with anxiety and depression. And I've definitely found that's worse when I can't do, I mean, you know, when you're on the road all the time, you do very little music, actually. You spend most of your time traveling and navigating different things and you, you know, spend about, you know, I don't know, five or 10% of your time thinking about playing or creating music. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think during those years, uh, I definitely just had my share of battling uh, doubt and, um, and doubt still comes up, but I think now I, I just know that music is um, now it really does feel like an outlet and uh, a joy and because um, it's not the thing that defines me anymore. I think, you know, whenever you let something like that define you and sort of rule you, it, it turns into something that eats you alive. So mm -hmm. it's it's a new day. And yeah, so I don't I'm I'm good to not give it up. At least right now. No, <laughs> At least today. Very thankful you did not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very thankful for that. The world is very thankful you did not. Well, thanks. Well, and you've done some really special songwriting projects with different populations. Um, am I right? Yeah. Like veterans, yes. people with cancer, children without families. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, Absolutely. And the, yeah. the impact that you've seen that make in those with those um, people groups? Yes. And this is one of the reasons that I firmly believe that we can all sort of be songwriters is um, I've, I've seen it happen with, with all kinds of folks from all kinds of walks of life. Uh, so one of those projects was I got to write with um, several veterans who um, came home from war battling PTSD. And uh, we got to sort of voice their story in song and um, it was really beautiful. Like one of them was a, a Vietnam vet and he just, um, you know, life had just been really difficult since he had been home. And I mean, this was, I don't know, four, three or four years ago. So not, not long ago. And he had just been living with um, this, you know, just intense struggle. And we got to, um, he, he kind of poured out his story and then we would kind of go along and build build out the lines of the song, build out the melody, um, build out the verses, and then um, kind of 
and he, he would recommend things. I mean, he, you know, he got into the process, which is really cool to see because it was, it was not just his story, but it was something that he really became a part of as we turned it into a song. And he was really into country music. So I did my best work uh, trying to write a country song <laughs> as best I could. <laughs> and yeah, so it was, it was really special. And another girl that I worked with, she had, um, had been on the front lines of Afghanistan and she was, mm. um, one of the folks that, I can't remember what they call them, but she she's not allowed to have a gun. Like she's going in and talking to civilians. Hmm. So she's like kind of disarming people and be, you know, hmm. like she's ha finding out if the women and children are okay and seeing what they need. And then um, I was like, I didn't know the army had these people on the front lines, but it's pretty oh. cool what she does, but it's super stressful. Cause if someone comes after her with a gun, she can't do anything. So she told stories and then we wrote this song about, um, her taking called, I'm taking back my life. Um, and she loves music and pop music. So we, you know, it was a totally different flair and she wrote a rap in it and it was awesome, you know, but just, um, she was hundred percent in that process and wanted to tell her story to people. And, and then we, um, the, the few times that I've gotten to do this, um, this thing with, with different, um, that we would sit together at the end of the day and everyone like there'd usually be maybe mm, six or six to 10 of us writing songs. And so we would get together at the end of the day and play those songs. And it was so mm. special just because they then could hear themselves in each other's stories. Mm. Um, again, that idea of music connecting us on a whole deeper level. So that was one thing. Um, I, I remember getting to work with a group of kids, um, at a children's home where their parents had um, were separated from them either by death or, um, you know, by, by some, for some other reason and just writing about the loss and the pain. And a lot of those songs did end up dark because mm -hmm. they were in these situations and also they were teenagers. So that sort of would lead a lot of times to just, you know, angst because you're a teenager and that's mm -hmm. what teenagers like. So, but just, um, just kind of helping them frame those stories was also a really special experience. And then um, one of my favorite opportunities to work with a cancer patient was my friend, Renell, who I got to know over a period of years. She was from Trinidad and she had come over to St. Jude's uh, Children's Cancer Hospital. And she was 20 when I met her. And I remember she was in a wheelchair. She had lost a leg at that point to cancer. And she was on all kinds of meds, um, like pain meds and things. But she was, I mean, she was working on her own, like, album of songs. She had written a book. I was like, my gosh, this girl gets more done in a day than, <laughs> than I wow. do. Yeah. And, um, and we wrote a song. She, she was a person of deep faith. Uh, and I remember her saying, you know, tomorrow I might wake up and get to travel the world and like sing all my songs and tell people I had a great miracle or tomorrow, like I might get up and I might find myself, you know, in the arms of Jesus, but either way I win. And so mm -hmm. we, we wrote a song about that. Um, cause that was just, you know, obviously like who says that when they're 20. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, there have been some pretty. I've always learned probably more uh, and been inspired more by those folks than, than having brought my own inspiration. But it's really been beautiful to hear people celebrate their lives and the things that they're walking through, uh, through music. And that's so cool that you were able to come alongside them and help them like as an experienced songwriter and help them craft their stories into yeah. a, into a song. It's been really, really su sweet. I feel just kind of like the facilitator, like I'm just sort of there, you know. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. You don't happen to have your keyboard or piano in front of you, do you? Uh, no, no, no <laughs> keyboard here. <laughs> no keyboard here. And I, you did that on purpose, didn't you? Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I live in a 400 square foot apartment in New York City, so you, there's oh. kind of one place to sit. <laughs> <laughs> your couch is your keyboard. Uh, yes, well. exactly. Your couch. Well, the, yeah, the couch. Sometimes I move it to the couch. I have to move the whole setup over to the couch. But for the, you know, for these few months, the next few months, it's it's over here in front of the guitar. So, yeah. <laughs> Fine. 
I won't ask you to play for us or sing for us then. But uh, <laughs> what is on the Ginny Owens calendar for 2021? What are you working on? Uh, I am, you know, I'm in the thick of uh, this this crazy book release and a new album. A, few, a couple of new EPs have just dropped this year. So, um, you know, we'll we'll keep doing that. I'm also in school, so um, life is never boring. No. Um, You're in yeah. school. What are I you, am in school. What are you doing? I'm just I'm getting a theology master's because oh, wow. why not? Why, why not? not? So, Write a book during the pandemic. Go yes. to theology school during the pandemic. Get a degree. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I bought a new comforter. That's the extent of <laughs> online COVID activities. No big deal. Yeah, I love um, it. I love how it. can people best support you and connect with you? Well, you can go to GinnyOwens.com. That's with a G, G-I-N-N-Y. And uh, you can go, if you're an Instagram person, it's Ginny Owens at Ginny Owens Official. Um, Twitter is at Jenny Owens. YouTube is Jenny Owens Music, as is Facebook. I'm all the places. All the places. Everywhere. So, um, yeah. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, Jenny's going to turn me into a songwriter, I think. This is the okay. moment. I have a lot. I have a lot of prompts, though. So do you have time for a lot? No. Well, pick your pick sure. your top couple, and we'll go, okay. we'll go from there. We'll see what you have time for. Okay, cool. So, well, so a few of these are just little practices. Um I would say, um, especially for those of us who maybe have never written before, uh, a really fun way to get into the idea of songwriting is to take a song you really like and rewrite the lyrics. So, mm. you know, replace mm. that with a story from your own life. You know, it's kind of a journaling thing. Um, you can also take like a favorite poem or an old hymn or an old folk song or something and give it a melody. Like if you're just a natural born singer mm. and you're like, I don't know how to put music to or lyrics to anything then just take some lyrics or take some you know take a a, a poem or a, a song and and put your own melody to it hmm. and the reason i say a poem or like an old song is because those um you know those songs won't have uh melodies that we know may or may not or they m won't be copyrighted so um hmm. Another thing that is really fun to do is to listen to a piece of music that has uh, no vocal lines. So like, I don't know, one of my favorites is the Adagio for Strings by Barber, mm -hmm. which is so haunting. And so write your own words to that melody, you know, or make up your own melody that goes with that music um, or just simply write as the music plays, you know, um, kind of use it as a backdrop to voice your um, your thoughts and feelings. Um, so the other thing I would say that I think is really important, if you, if you really want to go after the whole writing idea, you know, there's two sides to songwriting, right? There's melody creating and there's writing itself. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite, um, ideas, which comes from Julia Cameron and morning in, uh, the artist way is doing morning pages, which is, I kind of love that book by the yes, way. I'm so, so glad good. you mentioned it. Yes. Um, so just, um, this can just be, it doesn't have to be a song, just write, don't edit it. Don't look back at it. Just it's word vomit, which is just so lovely to say that, but <laughs> it's my favorite. Just, that's my favorite phrase. And I, I know that all the time when I say it, I know it's, <laughs> it sounds it's, gross, but I, it's, it's so accurate. Yes. What I mean, yeah. How else do you express that idea? Right. Exactly. Yep. So, so I do love to encourage people to do that. Just sit down, give yourself, I mean, if you don't have 10 minutes, give yourself five minutes in the morning and, and write or in the evening and just write. And if at first, because there's a connection between like your hand, you know, doing the writing and your brain. Mm -hmm. So the more that you make that connection, the more it feels like a friend to you. And then when you want to think about things like poetry or songwriting, it gets a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, I also think uh, a lot of us, you know, think about doing a gratitude list at night of things that have happened throughout the day that we're thankful for. And I think doing that, but doing it like kind of in sentence form, like, what did you love about this thing? And and why, you know? Um, mm. So um, I think a couple of really fun uh, writing prompts uh, or just thoughts to get us started would be like, uh, write uh, an answer to the question, what is standing between me and joy today? Mm. Um, and then another idea would be to take your favorite quote and write a song or a poem or a paragraph based on um, based on what it says. And another thing that you can do, just 
Uh, I, I tell, I, I've taught a lot of songwriting in, in my life. And so I tell my songwriters to do this, but I also tell just people that are getting into it is, is something I like to call immersive listening. So, you know, like enjoy, like take a song that you really enjoy and spend some time just listening to its nuances. Like maybe you analyze the lyrics, like what, what do you love about this lyric? Um, what do you, or is it the melody that you love most? You know, kind of dissecting those things. Like how many lines does the verse have? How many lines does the chorus have? Um, you know, what, what moves you about it? Because it kind of, um, that helps you uh, get sort of a sense of, of what songs should be like. You know, like how many lines rhyme? You know, what, how many, uh, you know, like what kind of picture are they painting in the first verse? Mm -hmm. um, those kind of things. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking about is just um, there are a few websites that have great prompts like Writer's Digest, which mm. is pretty easy to remember, and then Get Free Write. Um, those both have great uh, writing prompts. And then also uh, the Julia Cameron book is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, Anne Lamont, I think, is awesome. Like Bird mm -hmm. by Bird is a, is a wonderful book. Anything, anything by Mary Oliver will inspire your poetry and perhaps your songwriting. Um, she has tons of books she's been writing forever. So like No Other or uh, No Void, No Voyage and Other Poems, I think was her first book like way back in the 60s. And that still has just amazing poems. And then another book that I really have enjoyed is um, The Creative Habit, which is by Twyla mm -hmm. Tharp. And again, those are books I think that would work. Oh, and The War of Art uh, by Stephen Pressfield, which oh my is- gosh. There's so good of knowledge. Yes. Well, <laughs> those are it. all just books that I would say, if you want to be more creative and intentional with any aspect of your creativity, but especially your writing. And I, I, I mean, I give those to my songwriters all the time. So I'd say even your, your songwriting or just your regular writing, those books all are very wonderful at uh, encouraging you in those, in those things. Well, I love the accessibility too, of just like, how you talk about like just starting to write, like doing your morning pages to make yeah. friends with that part of yourself. Cause I think, yeah. I think a lot of people it's kind of it when you're trying something new and I feel this too, whenever I'm, I'm trying a new creative endeavor that I've never done before, or I'm using, um, or I'm trying to develop a new skill. It always feels awkward. Like that's that yes. first, you know, those first few steps of trying to figure something out, it just feels awkward and kind of unnatural. And I feel like it's easy to give up in that phase because yes, you're like, oh, well, I just am not talented in this. So I should just stop. Right. But really, it's a process, right? I think mm -hmm. of what I'm hearing from you that of befriending that part yes. of you of, of befriending your writing on a page um, so that when you go to that for expression, for um to lean into your creativity for whatever purpose it's there. Like you have to, you have to build a relationship with this creative side of yourself. Absolutely. In order. Yeah. I, so I love that. I love that. Well, and that's <laughs> one thing that um, Stephen Pressfield talks about a ton is just the idea of resistance. And like the more that we're, that something is sort of in our DNA, the more we're supposed to do it, the more we resist doing mm. it. And is so that like, why I don't want to do yoga? Yes, probably. <laughs> probably it is. Yes. And when I do it, I like love it. And, but then when I go to try to do it again, <laughs> you're just like, I'll do it next week. Well, and that's <laughs> the thing. Like writers love to think about writing. I remember reading a tweet once that said, um, the, they should make a cleaning service out of writers that have a deadline because that's what they're doing. <laughs> just anything other than writing. So yeah, I think there's really something to that. It's just like, we always put off what we, what we love most, but what, cause we're scared of it, you know? And mm. so, yeah, I think making friends with it is just a really practical way to think about it because you want to spend time with your friends mm -hmm. um, and you got to cultivate those relationships somehow. You, you, if you don't see them, you won't, you know, it's awkward the next time yeah. you got to start catching up again. So, well, and I think just yeah. like a friend, it's like, you don't just like, well, I've done this with certain friends, but you don't normally just jump into the, jump into the deep end. You right. like go through those shallow waters and, and get deeper and deeper. And I think it sounds, it, you know, it's a similar process with our, with our creativity, right? hundred percent. Yep. Definitely. Oh. Love it. Do you have a favorite song you've written? Oh, good question. <sighs> oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I do. Um, 
I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I have no idea. How's that for an answer? Let's see. <laughs> then, then if people are just uh, learning about you now, what's, yeah. what's one song that they should go and make sure they listen to first? Oh. Huh. Is that an well, even harder question? <laughs> that's a harder question, but I would say um, an, a fairly new song that's at, that just came out this year that they could listen to is called uh, Don't You Dare. I was just going to say that. It's so, I feel like as soon as I started listening to that song, like the first time I listened to it, I felt like, I like almost instantly started crying. It like reached into my soul and it was, it's very good. Oh man. I well, thanks. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So if you want your soul to be reached into. <laughs> <laughs> don't you yes. dare that's the first song you start with Ginny thank you so much for jumping on and talking to us today oh thank you guys this has been so delightful I cannot wait to hear more of the podcast so yes yeah. well get your um keyboard in the appropriate spot and come back and hang out with us okay <laughs> I'll do it all right thank you uh thank you. thanks for listening and thanks for watching make sure you subscribe wherever you're watching and listening we will see you next week everyone keep creating bye, bye. Thank you for listening to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast produced by Hearts Need Art, creative support for patients and caregivers in partnership with the National Organization for Arts and Health. You can help others learn about the healing power of the arts by subscribing, sharing, and reviewing the podcast wherever you listen or watch. The podcast is hosted by Richard Wilmore, co-hosted by Constanza Rader, and produced by Ivan Briones. Our theme song, Songbird, is written and performed by Natalie Lane. Visit heartseedart.org to learn how you can support our mission to create joy with people facing life-altering health challenges. Join us next week to learn more ways you can create arts for the health of it. The views expressed on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Heartseed Art, their staff, board members, or other affiliates. All content is created for informational purposes only. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice or to diagnose and treat any health condition. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professional with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard on this podcast.